What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. When talking about games nowadays, we usually refer to projects as either being AAA or indie. Essentially meaning is it a big budget, beautiful looking title, or a smaller experience that depends more on being unique than just flashy. The developers over at Ninja Theory are attempting to carve out a third option though. An adventure that looks and plays great, but is cheaper and shorter than other stuff you might find. That's a pretty hard goal they're aiming for, but the question is, does Hellblade manage to tread that line properly? Honestly, it seems like they have, and yet, when it comes to Senua's sacrifice, I don't think anyone is going to be discussing the production, because what we have here is a story for the ages. The game opens with our heroine, alone, on a crude paddle boat, rowing through murky waters of an unknown land. Voices in her head whisper like old friends having an argument, daring Senua to turn back to leave her journey before it's even started. In the time of Vikings, they believed that hell was a place you could travel to whenever you needed. Going there would almost certainly mean your doom, but legends say that a warrior strong enough to make it to the lowest layers of this demonic world could ask the devil herself to let a loved one return to life. After her boyfriend dies, Senua realizes that she can't go on without him, so coming here is the only way to bring him home. As soon as I left the safety of my boat and entered the first area, I immediately knew that this was a game unlike anything else. Each area is based on a different fallen god. A lord of flames that requires we burn bodies to ash to move forward while we also hear their awful screams. A master of illusion that tricks you into seeing what isn't there and the hounds of hell itself. The gameplay shifts between having puzzles to solve and God of War style combat. It seems like every door in this place is locked, but thankfully most are broken down with simple mechanics. See these runes etched into the wood? Once they're burned into your eyes, all you have to do is investigate your surroundings until you can find the matching shape. Doing this will weaken the magic and allow you to progress. When you're originally dealing with these, they're quite easy. Just basically, you have to turn around and boom, there it is. Later on though, it's important to watch where you're standing and notice the changing environment. For example, right here, I had to keep going through these wicker archways to phase into other realities so I could climb higher and eventually find the pattern I needed. Remember though, Senua isn't just here to solve puzzles. In her regular life, she was a powerful warrior and that blade work will be the key to her escape if she doesn't screw up. Combat is like a brutal dance where you have to target your enemy's weak points while also staying alert to avoid being surrounded. As you can see, there's no health meter or button prompts that appear on screen. Instead, we must rely on our own instincts to determine the second to strike, when to dodge, and the moment to parry to throw them off balance. There are many different kinds of these ghostly soldiers we fight, all with their own method of killing. Monsters wielding a shield are immune to basic attacks, but by kicking them hard enough, they'll spin backwards for a lethal hit. If they have a two-handed hammer, getting behind them will shred their vital organs and put them down fast. These blighted beings just love sneaking up behind you, so I highly suggest you back up at the start of any match to monitor the entire battlefield. The reason this is so important is because dying comes at a terrible cost. Since this is technically the land of the dead, our hero is slowly rotting just to exist here. It begins at the tips of her fingers, but with each fall, the darkness climbs closer to her head. If it makes it to her mind, your save file is deleted. No, that's not an exaggeration or me trying to be weird. It is actually literally doing that. It is erasing it. But while some may complain about this, I think it is a brilliant mechanic that fits the story perfectly. Senua is a person who's dealing with mental illness. Her soul is filled with chaos, but she's fully dedicated to her mission. However, in hell, everything is made to tear you apart and make you another hollow husk like the demons stuck here. It's logical in the mythology of this world that the effort it takes to come back from the edge of death would slowly break down more of her tissue like this. Moving through the flames of charred corpses, rebuilding her own sanity in the face of impossible odds, and trying not to lose focus already holds her at the end of her rope. Any extra burden on top of that is of course going to eternally destroy a piece of her. As I'm sure you can tell by my voice, I absolutely love this game. The themes are so bold and unique. There are several occasions where I'd make it out of a cave or something and have my breath taken away by a gorgeous view in front of me, seeing the next area, but then in the next moment watch it be tainted by the evils of hell. 
From start to finish, the plot takes about 6 hours to complete, but it feels fitting to have a shorter length for such an emotional journey. The one complaint I do have about this title is that I think the camera is way too close to us. Knocking aside the blows of multiple opponents at once or searching for puzzle runes felt slightly harder at all times because the viewpoint is basically sitting on my shoulder. Other than that, I think we have a project here that's going to earn loads of rewards for its daring design. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice a 9.5 out of 10. If you enjoy stuff like God of War or narrative heavy adventures like Uncharted, this is seriously a must buy. Sit down, beat it in an afternoon, and then just let it sink in. Personally, I'm still marveling at all the raw humanity they managed to put into Sinua's struggle. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But, do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Oh, hey! I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.